This tutorial is about floating planes. So here's an example. These are planes that float above the page, parallel with the page. And you can either use them like this, with the page as a base and the plane floating above it. Or you can use it like this, with the page as a background and the, the floating plane coming forward from it. So I've got a couple of examples here showing it in action. Here's a, a floating plane, the wings are the floating plane, and the head and tail are, are additions. Uh, you can follow them up in tutorial 8. The other example is this uh, bear head here. So the, the face of the bear is the floating plane. So I'll just show you how to make one of these. This is how they work. You start with a parallel fold. This is covered in tutorial 6. You add two parallelograms to it. This is covered in tutorial 5. And then you stick the floating plane on top. Start with a base sheet. This is just a simple piece of A4 card, folded in half, creased really thoroughly. Then you take another piece of card, not too big, something like this. Fold it in half, again as always crease it really thoroughly and then on the outer edges fold two gluing tabs so there they are about half an inch wide or one centimetre, fold them back on themselves and then you can actually fold it with them singly. So here we have it, it's one piece of card with three parallel folds. Now you cut it into three more or less identical pieces. There's no need to measure. You just want three strips. So here they are. You have three like this. Stick the first one down, spanning the spine. This is the parallel fold. So we take the glue. Put glue on one tab. Glue it fairly close to the spine, just about a centimetre out or one centimetre out. Make sure the, the gluing tab doesn't cross the spine. Then put glue on the other tab. Fold the whole base closed. So this is a parallel fold. Now you want two more parallelograms, one on each side. So to get them to find their natural position, glue one end so that the, the crease is flush with the, with the ridge of the parallel folds, absolutely flush there. And then you put glue on the other end. And now you, you fold it into its closed position. And so with it in its closed position, you then close the base. So this gives you one parallelogram coming off the parallel fold. If you want, you could stick a piece of card on there. That, that would work as a floating plane just on one side, just a flat image. In this case, we're going to build another parallelogram onto the other side. So again, you do exactly the same thing. Put glue on one tab. Glue it flush with the crease at the top. Fold it into its closed position. Put glue on the other tab. And then shut it down. So there you have it. You've got the, the parallel fold in the middle, two parallelograms coming off it. Now you can stick another, another piece on top. So here's a piece of card thoroughly creased already. So you just make sure that this central crease on the card goes into flush with that ridge on the, on the main piece. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. I've made a symmetrical piece, but one side could be shorter, longer, any shape you like. And then you put the glue on the, on the small surfaces on the top. Sit it on there, make sure the crease is in the gully, fold it, fold it shut. 
this is a dummy. I've made it a bit too big. The card is sticking out. So you could either, easiest thing is just to trim it down. But part of designing pop-ups is, is working out where the, where the piece is going to go when it's closed down. So here it is. There's a gully here you can build into. There's gullies underneath that you can build into and on the side. So you can build other pop-ups onto those. You've also got these four, four pillars that, are, that the whole pop-up is, is um, built on. And you can, you can stick pieces onto those so that they stick forward. So this generates a whole wealth of gullies and planes that you can build on. All that is explained in the introduction in tutorial one. There's another way of building them, which is building them onto a V-fold. So in this case, this is a V-fold. This is explained in tutorial two. And then it has two parallelograms, one on each side. You can stick a floating plane onto those. So that would be, here it is, piece of card with a crease in the middle. You just make sure that this, this crease is, is lined up with that gully so it finds its natural sticking position. There's a third way of actually raising a plane in the middle of the page. That's this way. So in this case, you would build out two parallelograms, one on each side. This is held firmly in place by these two triangles. Each of these is just the two 45 degree angles and the, the two of them balance each other so they pull against each other. So as you open and close the page, that, that raises that, keeps it rigid. Then you build the parallelograms onto it. Now I'll show you a few examples from books of the, uh, the floating plane in action. So this, this is a very beautiful book, Aladdin and his magic lamp. And it, it's all just floating planes. If you, if you look at it end on, the central parallel fold is slightly modified in this case. But anyway, there we are. We've just got a whole series of, of planes all floating parallel with the base. The second one is this, um, this is the Tower of London. This, again, it's just floating planes. This is the, the Booker's background with the, with the buildings coming forward from it. The third one, this is um, Appleby's Shapes by David Pelham. And the last one here, this is the floating plane. In this case, the ends of it are being used to pull up these, these outer, outer pieces. If you look at it end on, you can see the, the parallel fold in the middle and the two, two pieces, the two um, legs at each end holding up the plane. This one is a, a slight variation. This is uh, dragons. So this is quite an amazing construction. This is based on the central structure in this, in this model. Is a, it's a parallel fold, but it's an asymmetric parallel fold. So it makes the whole thing lean over sideways. And then it's got a, a parallelogram built onto each side of it. And, and then this is, the nose is actually a curved shape which comes in um, tutorial 13. The next book I'd like to show you is uh, Helen Barmer's Jungle Days. It starts off with these two animals, they're both based on floating planes. The body of the giraffe and the body of the elephant, they're both floating planes. Um, built onto them, the elephant head, this is a curved shape, this is tutorial 13. And this giraffe's neck, this is an asymmetric V-fold, that's tutorial four. So if we look at these, you can see the way they're made with, it's a, a V-fold lifting a parallelogram. And in this case, there's, the parallelogram is only on one side. On the other side, you have a, a tab which is supporting the other side of the floating plane. And there's another really good example at the end of this book. It's this this rhinoceros. So the rhinoceros is actually built in three stages. You've got the first pl floating plane is the body of the rhino with its legs. The second floating plane is the head of the rhino with its ears. The third step is the nose of the rhino. And this again, this is a, a curving shape. This is tutorial 13. And then on top, there's the rhino horn. And if we look at these floating planes, the first one, this is a parallel fold with a parallelogram on each side. The second one is a, 
a v-fold so you can see that this is a, a v-fold the difference between them they give a different action as they close so the the v-fold type makes the head move up and down the parallel fold type it just goes up and down vertically so if, if we look at this you'll see that the the rhinoceros head comes down towards you as the page opens so the last one I want to show you is this this amazing book um, Brava Straga Nona um, so the the one I want to show you is this amazing spread and this table the table is actually a floating plane if we look at the back of it you'll see the way the table is supported this is two of these 45 degree folds the two triangular folds one on each side that make the central um, pillar keep it rigid and this is this is a, a really amazing book this is this is really a masterpiece okay, just before we finish i'd like to just show you um, how you can vary these things so this is your base and here's the spine fold this is your parallel fold built across the spine and then it, you don't have to do another parallelogram exactly the same size as I just showed you in the example I made. You could make it much longer. So you could build another leg out here and another one out here. And then the, the floating plane will be like this. Again, of course, you'd have to make sure that the, the base is long enough so it doesn't stick out when it folds down. And the, the important thing in this is that this length between the, this leg and this leg, this length, length A, is the same as here. From the ridge to where this one is joining on, this is also length A. On the legs, this, this height, this is B, this needs to, to match this height on the initial parallel fold. This is length B. Another variation is, here's your base sheet with the spine just here. You build the parallel fold onto it, and then it doesn't actually have to be a regular parallelogram. You can do an asymmetric parallel fold onto it. So you might go up like this and coming down like this. And so in this case, this is the gully that you're working from, and you're measuring up to here. So it's this length plus this length must equal this length plus this length. This is the asymmetric parallel fold that's explained in tutorial six. And the other side, it doesn't have to be identical to that. It can be, you know, something like, like this. And so in this way, the floating plane that you can build onto it can actually be not actually parallel with the base, but something, you know, something a bit different. This is the, the diagram I've just drawn so you can understand it. Everything I've explained today in this tutorial, it's all covered in this, this book, Pop-Up Design and Paper Mechanics.